In the world of Swiss mechanical chronographs, there really is no way around it. You're going to have to drop a pretty decent chunk of change in order to get one. With many of the models on the more attainable end of the price range being powered by third-party calibers from the likes of Valjou or Eta, followed by a rapid and expensive jump into the world of manufacturer movements, exemplified by brands like Breitling or Omega, for example. Today, though, we're going to be looking at the new Longines Avigation Big Eye in titanium, a heritage-inspired chronograph from one of the best brands in the vintage reissue game that makes a compelling case for kind of splitting that difference between third-party and in-house, while also remaining stunning, of course, in the process. Let's jump into it and take a closer look. So after the great amount of feedback from the previous giveaway, just want to keep this going. So going to be doing another giveaway this month up to $1,600 on teddybaldasar.com. So how this works, follow all the instruction in the form down below in the description, pick out a watch up to $1,600 from teddybaldasar.com, actually get three links from the website, throw them in the form. And then if you are selected to win, you will be able to pick one of those three watches as your choice as being a winner of the giveaway. So definitely act fast. We're gonna be announcing the winner here upcoming. Be sure to be subscribed here as well as following me on Instagram. If you do wanna stay up to date, you only have 48 hours of claim. We'll be making the announcement. So be following in both places so that you can make sure that you don't miss it. But good luck to all of you that enter. So the Avigation Big Eye line was rather beloved by collectors when it was first released in 2017, after a collector of the brand brought one of their watches to Longines. And the design was actually not well documented within Longines archives, but after being enamored with the piece, the brand prioritized production around a traditional black dial variant and stainless steel that quickly became one of the best value propositions in Swiss chronographs from a mechanical perspective, as a result primarily of the movement within. So as mentioned at the beginning, the world of Swiss made chronographs is generally more expensive than the traditional three hand watches as a byproduct of the complexity of the calibers inside. With this, it is more important than normal to examine what is housed within this big eye as it helps kind of set the stage where this one sits in the market. For those not familiar, if you are in the market for an automatic chronograph made with a Swiss movement, the three most common calibers that you are going to see from the $1,000 to $5,000 range are the cam actuated Valjoux 7750 and 7753 with the 7750 offering a vertical display with a date and the Valjoux 7753 with a horizontal display with a date that can be changed through an additional pusher on the side of the case. The movements are simply robust and very reliable, but have their traditional downsides being thicker, loud with their oscillating weight rotation, and the pusher set and reset being just a bit stiff in comparison to something that we're gonna be looking at today. In addition, you also will have your modular systems like the ETA 2894, essentially a mechanical caliber with a chronograph module on top. Now these have an upside of just being thinner, but at times can be a bit less straightforward to service by watchmakers. So there's certainly downsides here as well. And then above $5,000, this is when you start getting into the world of manufacturer chronograph calibers with the likes of the B01 from Breitling as an example with its column wheel design and lengthy power reserve with chronometric precision. Also in this range, there are many Speedmaster calibers with the most recent Moonwatch housing the coaxial 3861 with a master chronometer. Recently just did a video on that new Moonwatch, uh, but it has up specification with its accuracy, resistance to magnetism, Etc., as well as the legendary El Primero. But simply put, many of the watches housing these movements are starting to get you closer to prices of $10,000, leaving you with quite a deal of separation from third party options and the in house calibers. And I have done a video looking at just kind of the lay of the land of different third party calibers, but with this understanding now set in place, let's examine the L6885 caliber within this Longines. As a result of falling underneath the Swatch Group umbrella, Longines has a unique access to a variety of calibers produced by Swatch's movement manufacturing arm in ETA. The L6885, while based on the similar architecture compared to the Valjoux 7753, it can be specifically tied to the ETA 
808L01. It's a caliber offered exclusively to Longines by ETA. And this movement, despite not being fair to call in-house, of course, does offer a range of benefits compared to the average third-party chronograph calibers coming in this $3,000 price range. First, the movement comes paired with a column wheel actuation that creates a more tactile response from the pushers and a more precise stop and start than that of a cam system. In addition, and I think this is really great for, I would just say day-to-day -day wear, this one offers an extended 66 hour power reserve, a silicon balance spring to assist against shock and magnetic fields, and an extended five year warranty, all features that are seldom if ever seen in this price range compared to the competition. With all that in mind, the inclusion of this type of caliber in this Longines really helps in kind of setting the stage why this piece is pretty uniquely positioned in the market. It is hidden from a closed case back, which could have been nice to see given that you are getting some up finish compared to the competition in the price range, getting some Cote de Genève finish across the rotor, perlage finishing as well across the base plate. It's probably arguably one of the best chronograph calibers you're going to find, if not the best, for around 3,000 bucks. When it comes to the rest of this piece, a lot of this is the same from the previous 2017 variant. Instead of stainless steel, this big eye is paired with a grade five titanium case with a 41 millimeter diameter, 48.5 millimeter lug to lug distance, and a thickness of 14.4 millimeters. On the wrist, it wears pretty true to that 41, if not a bit smaller, wearing like a 40 millimeter as a result of that titanium case, which is a bit more muted in its color than the stainless steel, as well as of course being lighter. And while it's easy to say, I wish this thing was thinner, which of course I do, we have to keep in mind the realities of automatic chronograph calibers, especially at this more, I would say approachable price point for Swiss mechanical chronographs. But this one is certainly on the thicker side of things, but does wear pretty decently on the wrist. As you can see, I mean, it's sliding underneath my cuff here. Keeping the big eye in place on the wrist is a 20 millimeter rustic light brown leather strap featuring hand stitching near the lugs and a simple signed titanium pin buckle tapering down to 18 millimeters at that buckle end. Now the strap feels high quality, complements the tool watch pilot military vibe well, is comfortable on the wrist and the shade of brown pairs well with this blue dial. Given the utilitarian roots of this design, which we'll dig into in a bit, the big eye features case architecture in keeping with the many vintage military chronographs with straightforward angles at the lugs and case sides that drop near vertically away from the step bezel and domed sapphire crystal. The large sign push pull crown rests in the usual three o'clock location that is easy to engage with prominent pushers on either side, each operating with positive feel and tactile feedback people expect and enjoy from column wheel calibers. This watch does only feature 30 meters of water resistance Distance, so no swimming with this one, of course, but this is a chronograph at the end of the day. So probably not gonna be the watch for you if you are looking for something of that sort. In terms of finishing, this titanium big eye is satin finished almost everywhere, but makes use of polishing on the crown, pushers, and the bezel to just kind of catch the eye in changing lighting conditions. It is also important to dwell on the grade five titanium a bit, as this offers a stronger base than grade two with resisting scratches and corrosion, while also exhibiting the lighter feel on the wrist. And speaking to the dial, the backstory of the Avigation Big Eye is a bit murkier than most Longines heritage pieces. However, what is clear is that this military or aviation style Big Eye chronograph dial is attractive and well executed with the big eye name naturally stemming from the oversized 30 minute chronograph register at that three o'clock position. While the original 2017 big eye had a very traditional black dial with printed white markings, this new edition leans significantly more into the modern presentation with a sunburst metallic blue dial offset by faux loom on the printed Arabic numerals and within the baton style hands with its white printing for all of the other dial elements. Given the notable effect of this metallic blue dial exhibiting a textured finish, it's paired with the titanium case. This is a vintage reissue sort of unlike any other, blending the inspiration from a 90 year old watch design with a type of presentation that feels both up to date and relevant. Looking beyond the big eye register, we have a 12 hour register at the six o'clock position, running seconds at the nine, and each of the sub dials is executed in a darker shade that adds contrast compared to the central blue dial surface. In terms of its incandescence, the loom on this piece is adequate and a bit stronger on the hands than the other numerals, with the numerals fading much quicker than that set within the handset and is a little bit behind maybe some of the, I would say industry leaders in the loom department, but certainly will be able to help with telling the time in the dark. Now it is important to mention that for around $600 less, 
you still can get that stainless steel variant with that black dial. Of course, you're not getting the titanium case there with this really striking blue. Uh, but both of these watches and kind of just unpack here and why these are pretty compelling and I think very different in the marketplace is just where they fall. Really looking at the movement is kind of setting the stage here. Of course, the military roots and um, really what Longines is doing from their archive perspective, despite this one being a bit uh, maybe less documented compared to their traditional heritage pieces that they unveil, usually being well documented, Longines has probably one of the best archives out there in watchmaking and how they have just historians studying it uh, quite diligently. This one kind of just slipped through the cracks and is a bit uh, more unique in what it's doing, but uh, of course, a very attractive looking chronograph. These two models kind of fall perfectly within this gap between the world of third party movements and then going into in-house manufacturer calibers and in some ways offering kind of the best of both worlds getting the exclusivity that comes with uh, getting a movement that is not just seen everywhere while also getting some architecture that could be a little bit easier to service compared to that of some of the more robust high-end calibers from the likes of say the B01 or say the El Primero or even some of those Speedmaster calibers that could be found in here. Getting a column wheel function. Also, I think a huge thing here is the 66 hour power reserve. That is fantastic for a chronograph, especially for one that is just kind of dipping its toes into the water of just being a bit more uh, custom or proprietary in what it's doing. And then when combining that with the fun of kind of going against the traditional norms of symmetry with that large oversized minute counter at that three o'clock position uh, in the fun name, of course, of Big Eye, these are watches that I think do something a bit different compared to the busy landscape of Swiss chronographs in this price range, while offering up some unique components that make them kind of stand on their own, both from a design perspective, as well as a technical perspective with the movement inside. And quite frankly, big fan of them. And I can see why so many enthusiasts have loved these things for quite some time. All right, guys, I'd love to see comments down below. What do you think of this new titanium version as well as the previous version of the Big Eye family. I know this is a pretty beloved model from Longines and kind of falls in this strange gray area in regards to where it sits in the marketplace. But with that comes some compelling and some different kind of value uh, where it is residing. And of course the design and heritage just uh, appeal that I think Longines does very, very well. Also, if you did enjoy this video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that as well. If you do want to enter the giveaway, we'll have the instructions in the description down below as well as the form. So just follow all the instructions in that form and you'll be good to go. Be sure to be subscribed here as well as following on Instagram so you can stay up to date when that giveaway is announced and other opportunities as we probably will be just doing more of these in the future. Also head over to teddyballastar.com if you're in the market for a new watch, we're an authorized dealer of over 25 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, full factory warranty. So if something goes wrong, you are completely covered. And nine out of every $10 that we generate goes right back into this content that we're creating, trying to foster up a new generation of watch enthusiasts in the process. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.